All right, everybody, welcome back to the best hour of their day. Probably one of the more important episodes we've ever done. And uh, I have a return guest here, Mr. John Briggs, who I'm, I'm assuming you have not slept in days at this point, like trying to figure this out. I don't even know what that is. I mean, I did lay in bed and, and rolled around for about three hours last night. Uh, so what we're going to try to unpack here is the whole SBA assistance loan for gym owners to try to give you guys the the clearest information about what you should be looking into, what you need to have prepared for that, um, and then maybe even uh, cover some kind of misnomers out there. It's just bad information that's floating around there because there's a lot of information going around out there. So um, I think it's probably helpful to start here. So there's three big things floating around, John. So if you could unpack these, because I'm not going to be able to do it intelligently. So there's the CARES Act, there's the IEDL, and then there's the Triple P loan. Like, can we... Yep. Uh, there's, is there a difference? Like, what the hell do I need to know? What, the, what are those? Yes, for sure. And let me just, let me just throw this in too. Like, there's a lot of well-intentioned people out there right now in Facebook groups and whatever, sharing what they think they know. And um, I apologize that if anything I say is counter to what they said, I am very confident in the, based on the amount of hours I have put into this and the actual laws that I've read, the actual laws that I've read and the actual publications from the credible sources. Um, I just hope that you'll believe me over some person on Facebook if what I say is disagreeing with what they said. So, well, I believe you because you're my accountant. So, okay. <laughs> so let's, um, there's actually only two things. So they talk about the CARES Act. That's the paycheck protection program loans that people are referring to. Okay. Like love the government, right? Um, the Senate, the bill was called the CARES Act. And then by the time they signed it into law, they changed the name. And so you have all these things floating around with the CARES Act. And then anyways. Okay. So, so the CARES Act and the, the paycheck protection program are synonymous. Synonymous. Okay. So let's, let me first start with the ones that have existed. Those are the economic injury disaster loans which we're going to call EIDLs because it's less of a mouthful yeah. than the other one. Those have existed for a few weeks now. Those are the loans, the EIDLs you apply for directly through the SBA's website. So at this point, if you Google SBA disaster loans, you're going to get the link that takes to the site. If you tried to fill out an application the first week, so two weeks ago, um, you likely got fed up and didn't complete it because it was very complicated. As of this week, they have updated the link to a very simple, uh, very simple that I would say even gym owners who classify themselves as people who hate numbers, either, like, you're still going to be able to fill out the application in 30 minutes or less. I did that. So that's the expedited one. So I did that one and I needed minimal information and i think it took me about 10 minutes yep and i got That's a confirmation exactly right. number at the end which now i'm afraid is not an actual confirmation because of other things floating around the internet people <laughs> are like it's not real it didn't actually fill that out so i have no idea but yeah if you have not filled that out it, it is very very simple you probably wouldn't even need to email or call your accountant to figure that out no i mean really the only financial information that it asks for is what's your gross revenue from last year and your cost of goods sold. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll just say the definition they're looking for on that application is a traditional definition. So if you sell supplements or apparel, that's a cost of goods sold. That's the only number that a gym owner is gonna include on, on that number. Most So that number is gonna be pretty small for most, most uh, gym okay. owners. So that's, a um, as you mentioned, you fill out the application and that's the one where you can request a $10,000 advance. Um, this is one of the areas where people are super excited about, but don't quite understand how it works. And I think there's also elements that nobody knows how this is going to work. But let me explain what we do know. You're requesting $10,000 in advance. They're, they're calling it an advance. What that means is if your application is accepted and you take the loan, they are saying, I've already given you $10,000 of this. In which case, if you get the EIDL loan, you're going to have to pay that back. Yeah, I think it's listed as a grant, which is which which is even worse. Right. The way it's well, the way it's worded. Totally. Yeah. And so, 
if they deny your application, then it becomes a grant. And grants uh, okay, got it. don't have to be paid back. And so people are just thinking like $10,000 of free money. Well, heck yeah, that sounds nice to anybody I've ever met. <laughs> You're like, sure, I'll take $10,000 of free money. Um, but I, I know that the Congress only set aside a certain amount of money for it. Who knows who's actually, who's going to actually get the $10,000. It's only a grant if you get denied the application. Got it. Okay. If you don't get, if you don't get denied, then it, it will just adjust your total loan by $10,000 that they've already given you. And that, and those will be included in your terms for payoff. Yeah. So like, let's okay. say I borrowed 50,000 or they approved me for 50. They're only going to send me 40 at that point because they've already sent 10. Okay. What is, what I'm not sure of is if they accept your application, but then you say, I don't actually need it, but they sent you the 10,000. I do not know. And nobody knows. Are they going to make you pay that back or will they treat it as a grant? That's interesting. Yeah. Okay. Because I think for these scenarios. <laughs> I think, yeah, I think you should just plan on paying that one back. Um, so, uh, so I have questions about that. So let's say I'm applying for that one. How do I know my, like, but then this is before, so actually before I ask that question, you cannot use the, the CARES Act or the Paytech Protection Loan for the same purposes that you would take out the EIDL. So let's say I'm going to apply for the, we'll get to the PPL, but let's say I'm going to apply for that. What could I use the EIDL for? And then how would I know how much I could apply for? Yeah, so at this point, I don't think anybody knows how they're figuring out what you can apply for because the application is so simple. I don't know if they're taking just a, some multiple or fraction of the your gross revenue that you're claiming. Because the way I look at it is you're going to apply. Someone from SBA is going to have to call you to like actually finalize this thing because the law says you have to be able to demonstrate how you suffered an economic loss from COVID-19. Mm -hmm. Now there's no doubt gym owners have suffered an economic loss, but they have to get that info from you somewhere and they don't ask for that anywhere Yeah. yet. So there's going to be a phone call involved. I am imagining at that point on that phone call is where you work with the loan agent on the other end to figure out how much to apply for what you plan on using it for. Now that being said, they're very clear on things that it's not allowed for. Because my first thought, which I think a lot of people thought was, when you heard this EIDL, you're like, heck yeah, 4% interest rate? I'm going to refinance all my other debt into this thing. Mm -hmm. I have two commercial loans that are about 6% for some properties that I own. I'm like, yeah, I'm just going to borrow that much money, refinance it. Specifically listed as an exclusion as what's not allowed um, to be used. In general... Uh, basically business expenses is what you're able to use it on. You can pay vendors with it, anything to grow your business or to keep it open. Those are all going to be approved expenses, um, but definitely not refinancing. Not, not allowed, unfortunately. Now, okay. as you mentioned, I just want to make sure that people understand that the rules say you cannot have a duplicative loan for the same amount mm -hmm. um, between these two programs. And we'll get into it, but just know that you're likely going to use the triple P loan for payroll expenses. Okay. So if you do need more money than that, you would use the EIDL for everything other than the payroll expenses. And you could technically get both. From everything that I've seen so far, no one, actually, I don't know if anyone, I mean, no one's even gotten both yet. So I don't know anybody that's gotten anything. And I'm also curious as to, well, I do have another question about the uh, the IDL, but so actually, let me go back to that because I know somebody's in the in there because I don't want anybody to get in, into trouble, right? So they're like, okay, well, I won't refinance, but I'll pay these bills and then just pay the other one, right? So when you say refinance, is that a specific refinance? Well, no. So it anything where you're using the loan proceeds to pay off the principal of another existing loan. Okay. That's what they're referring to. Got it. Um, could people, I'm trying to think of the different scenarios that people would do. Let's say I've got credit card debt. Can I pay that? 
Okay. No. Yeah. So I'm asking these questions so nobody gets themselves in trouble in this yeah. area. Okay. You're um, basically going to use it for new upcoming uh, expenses, business expenses. Got it. Okay. Um, and then the terms on that are, are good. I think they're 4%. Phenomenal. And you can go from, I think it's anywhere from 10 to 30 years. Is that correct? <laughs> yeah. 10 okay. to 30 years, no more than 4% uh, interest rate. And everyone I've heard who's spoken to a banker or somebody is like, oh, it's going to be much less than 4%. But even if it were 4%, that's still a great it's interest killer. rate. It's killer. Yeah. Okay. So... What would you recommend for gym for gym owners that are doing this? They're like, hey, I like I don't. It's hard for me to to calculate currently what my losses are going to be. Should I be looking at a six month multiple of revenue? Like, what should what should you like kind of be prepared for if you were going to do the the EIDL with regard to like, hey, so listen, I, you know, if it's okay, let's talk about the basics of the triple P loan first. Before, yeah, that's fine. Because I think okay. then my recommendations will make more sense. Okay, perfect. Yeah. So these other loans, the CARES Act that you might be referring to it as, are it's really the Paycheck Protection Program loan. Okay. Uh, and and we're instead of saying PPP all the time, we're calling it Triple P. Because <laughs> uh, I did that on the first webinar I did, and I felt like I was talking to one of my kids. Like, PPP. <laughs> PPP. <laughs> so uh, Paycheck Protection Program loans. Just as the name says, the purpose, the goal of government by even offering these is to protect people's paychecks. If you really think about it, it's just another form of unemployment that doesn't, it's not going to burden the unemployment system. Mm -hmm. um, and what they're doing there, the most you can take out on a triple P loan is two and a half times your average monthly payroll cost. That's the max amount. So let's say you get it, you get the loan. If you use the loan for paying payroll, mortgage interest, rent, or utilities, then they will forgive the loan. So now, utilities, water, electric, uh, cable internet? Cable internet. Cell yeah. phone provider? Telephone. It doesn't okay. say cell phone. It says but telephone. I mean, okay, but, but I mean, yeah. yeah, nobody has a telephone. I don't, it's 2020. So. Now, they already came out two nights ago and said because of the anticipated high volume of these, you are only allowed to use up to 25% of the loan on the non payroll expenses. Okay. So let's say I got $10,000 in a loan. I, have, I can only use 2,500 of that, no more on rent mortgage utilities got it okay now that being said i can use it i could use the full ten thousand dollars on rent mortgage utilities it just means that they're probably only going to forgive 25 percent of the loan instead of 100 percent of the loan got it okay um mm. and i think it's just important to realize i mean it's called the paycheck protection program mm -hmm. i mean so that's their goal like yeah use it for payroll and using it for payroll, knowing that you don't have to pay that loan back if you use it for payroll, you've had, you have other resources of cash now that you didn't use for that. So exactly, you are better off of head. Don't feel like you're, I, I just, I talked to some people are like, oh man, they're screwing me. I'm like, well, you're going to pay payroll. So it's going to get forgiven. And yeah. you know, it's, it's, it's kind of like somebody else paying your payroll for you for two months. So, you know, assuming that you can keep some decent amount of your monthly revenue, you can just pocket what you would typically pay for payroll. Yep. So, okay. Totally. All right. Now, um, the other questions we often get, well, how, do, how does the forgivable part work? So from the date you end up getting the loan proceeds starts an eight week window. And it's that eight week window they're going to look at for, um, determining how much of your loan is going to be forgiven. So basically, if I got the $10,000, that would theoretically mean that my payroll is less than $5,000 a month. Um, I'm, if I use that for payroll during the eight-week period, that's the proof I'm going to submit to the lender based on whatever they want me to show them, and then they'll well, hopefully uh, forgive the loan. Now, know that this just came out this morning that I've been reading the lender is the one who will decide if the loan is forgiven or not. 
So basically the SBA is giving kind of unprecedented authority to the banks specifically for this loan. And your relationship with the loan is going to be directly through the bank for the whole process. So that was my other question is this is directly through, I don't want to say private, but like local providers, you're going to go probably to the bank that you bank with and you're going to get this PPP or this triple P loan with them. Like this is not through the SBA. That's right. And I'm assuming it's because they just can't not handle the volume. So they just took money, they jammed it to the banks and they said, you guys handle it because we can't do whatever this is going to be 5 million applications for this. Or more. Yeah, yeah exactly. I'm sure it's way more. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, that's okay. a good distinction because yeah, the EIDLs you apply for directly to the SBA, the triple P loans, you're going to go through a bank. And we are saying at this point, start with your, the current people you bank with and ask them um, if they're doing this. And maybe at some point you can share your experience with your financial institution. Um, because anyway, so that that's kind of how the triple P works. Uh, again, it, it's very sexy because the loan amount can be 100% forgiven. Where the EIDL, still a great interest rate, not, not gonna be forgiven. Now let's say, um, let's talk about if I use the funds for something other than payroll or for whatever reason, I don't get all of it forgiven your term, your rate on that amount that's still remaining that needs to be paid is 0.5%. It's basically free, basically free. And you have to pay it back. It's a two year term. Those are phenomenal. That's a phenomenal rate. Yeah. Uh, so if you, if you legit need the triple P loan to pay rent for the next two and a half, even three months, uh, that's still, this is still a great option to use for that type of thing because yeah. of that free interest rate, basically. So on this note, in order to maximize this, I think this is worth noting. If you really want to be able to try to come out ahead, you as a gym owner should be thinking about retaining as much revenue as humanly possible so that this is just free money. I, yeah. like, I want to say that again, you should be doing everything possible to generate revenue so that you can just have somebody else pay your bills for two months. Like that is your best possible case scenario. Um, so I, cause I think there's some people that I've just seen some stuff floating around where they're just like, they're kind of like giving up and they're like, Oh, well, I'm not really going to have to pay these bills. And I'm like, yeah, but you're going to have to pay bills after this. And if you don't have any revenue coming in, then, then you're going to be in deep shit. Um, yep. You're going to be so far behind the power curve. It's not even funny. So, yeah. So on that, um, that kind of leads towards the way I'm personally and recommending people kind of think about these two loans. Uh, obviously the $10,000 possibility of a grant, super exciting, right? Uh, why not apply for it? And yeah. Go for it. I so mean, the, We're recommending that's the first step people should do. Go ahead and apply for that just in case. Um, second step is as of us doing this right now, like they can't even process these until tomorrow at the earliest. This is both of them or just the triple P's? So the EIDLs are already in the works. Yeah. Um, who knows if they have two people over there trying to answer a million <laughs> applications. I don't know. But the triple P loans are not like tomorrow is the first day that the SBA will let banks start processing these. I don't, I mean, I've gotten notification from Chase that they intend to be ready for it by that point. But um, I, I have not heard from any other bank if they're going to be able to do that or not. Yeah. I haven't heard from my bank because um, I can't get an actual person on the phone about it. It's just a, it's just a recording. Uh, so I'm a little worried about it. And they just referred me to a website that doesn't say anything. And, but I'm going to be on the phone all day tomorrow, just kind of trying to get a hold of somebody to make sure that happens. Um, because, so you can speak to this better than I can. This is not infinite money. So if uh, there's going to be some people who are left kind of, you know, for lack of a better term is, you know, with their proverbial dicks in their hands because they waited too damn long. Yeah. And in this case, um, I mean, people, I, I brought that up to one guy and he's like, wow, I never thought $2.2 .2 trillion would go that fast. Well, we have to realize that the $2.2 .2 trillion CARES Act is 880 pages. 
And this paycheck protection program and the things that we're talking about consist of maybe the first hundred pages. I mean, the, you won't be surprised with the last 400 pages or so of the act talks about how they're going to fund things for the Senate and the yeah. House of Representatives. Yeah, I think was, correct me if I'm wrong, the total roughly allocation roughly was about 350 billion. Yeah. Okay. That's the number I'm familiar with. But guess what? With as many people, aka every single small business owner who doesn't have their head in the sand, who would have heard about this by now, they're going to apply for this. Never in the history of mankind has there been a forgivable loan No. that that they set off in the beginning saying, hey, we're going to forgive this potentially. Holy cow, are you kidding? Like, everybody's going to apply. So, yeah, if you wait too long, that $350 billion, I mean, like for I just – I was talking to a client the other day and yesterday and we were talking about this. His two and a half times monthly payroll is half a million dollars. There I are know, lots yeah. of other businesses with less than 500 employees, half a million, a million dollars. Like that goes pretty fast. And so very quickly you can see how you're already at 10 million, hundred million. I mean, it it's go, going to get sucked up quick to the point where, I mean, realistically, they might just be like, hey, because of demand, like everybody gets like five grand. <laughs> right. Like, like, well, that doesn't help at all, but thanks. Um, okay. The, what was the other question I had for you? There's another one. So you can use it for payroll. You can use it for mortgage. You can use it for utilities. Uh, oh yeah. What, so typically what should people show up to so let's say i go to the bank tomorrow they're like it's a miracle i'm the only one there and they're just like we've been waiting for you we've been waiting for you for this application what should i go because what you don't want to do is go to the bank and say what do i need and then have oh, to go gosh, back of the sure. line again like what do we need to show up with so that like you well, have what they need so this can get executed that day totally i think um let's realistically i don't think anybody's showing up in person for these loans I know Chase already said these are online only loans. Mm -hmm. You can only apply online. You can't even call a phone number. Like, I mean, from one standpoint, I think they're being smart, thinking through it all, realizing we're going to put the burden on a computer algorithm type of thing and not, okay, but no one knows for sure. Two nights ago, the SBA came out with their first, like, here's the sample template of the a sample application excuse me, for a triple P loan. It's two pages. Uh, it, it doesn't look too complicated, um, but I'm going to guess that what they're gonna want from you is a copy of your last filed tax return. And since we're dealing with payroll costs, they're gonna wanna look at your 941 forms, which is what you file or your payroll company files for you um, for the payroll tax. Because as of right now, even though the law says that your payments to independent contractors are part of the payroll cost, none of the applications I've seen are listing that as an included expense. And I think the reason is, is because theoretically, your independent contractors can apply for this loan themselves. Yeah. They just can't apply until April 10th. Oh, okay. Because that, so, and that's important because, so do gem owners put that in there? Because, I mean, we've already had this discussion on a previous podcast, as, as I know you've talked about it before. Most gems, their payroll is, I don't know, 90% to 99. So that yep. changes how much you can ask for. Like, by... Yep. By a significant amount. Like if I did that, I'm not getting any money. <laughs> yep. So um, as of right now, my recommendation is we just have to wait and see what the applications, because here's what I'm predicting is going to happen. SBA sent out the sample application and the banks are going to modify it to make it more complicated. So yeah. I, I don't know exactly, like whatever the application says, that's what you're going to have to go off of. Um, I have heard from some professionals who've been talking to um, book banks that they have heard of some banks allowing you to include the independent contractor stuff. Now, I, as soon as I hear what those institutions actually are, 
I'm going to do my best to spread that around because I know a lot of gym owners pay their coaches as contractors. Now, that being said, if that's the case and you are, yeah, uh, you know, this is one of those times where good tax planning or the flexibility you wanted to give your coaches comes back and hurts you. Yeah. And if you need the money, then the EIDL is going to be the loan that you're going to want to get. And yeah, while it's not forgivable, it's still really great terms. And, uh, you know, it, it can help you get through this time. The other question I had with regard to that is, and I know, because when I was on your, because you did a, a call the other day that I was on, and this was, I think it's still gray at best, is owners and how they pay themselves. So if you're an owner and you're doing anything that looks like profit first, you're paying yourself a minimum W-2 and then taking the rest of your pay via distributions. Yep. Does that get thrown in there or is that off the table or do we not know yet? We still don't know. Uh, for sure, obviously, the minimal W-2 amount is going to be included. Um, typically, when they re refer to self-employment income, if you're a partnership, you're paying self-employment tax on that money. If you're an S corporation, you're not. And so I, I don't know if the banks are going to allow the K-1 income from your S corp or not. Uh, if, if not, like, yeah, again, it, it's honestly still the right move in the long term. It just sucks right now Yeah. because effectively it's free money that people are getting and you're going to miss out on it. But yeah. in the long run, it's still, it was the better, it was the best tax strategy that existed at the pre COVID-19 world. Yeah. The, on that note with the, so let's say for gym owners, cause this could be a real scenario. So you go and they say, Nope, we don't cover 1099. And basically this shows that you made uh, $24,000 last year via your W2. So you get a whopping, uh, what is that going to be? Five grand. Five grand. Yep. And so you're like, okay, well, I mean, I'll take it. You know, obviously you're going to take the money because that's going to be very easy for you to spend on payroll, obviously, uh, right. or, or rent. And even if you just spend it on rent, you got to pay back what, 1500 bucks. So who cares? doesn't even matter. Um, th so now I'm looking at the EIDL and that's going to be my primary engine for trying to get some cash. What, uh, what's your, because the way I've looked at it, and what I've seen is because of the private lenders that are doing the PP, the triple P, nobody has any idea what the time frame is for an EIDL. Right. Like I, you, no one. I mean, I don't. I haven't met anyone who's actually gotten it yet or seen the ten thousand dollars. I know a crap load of people who've applied. I don't. I applied. I haven't seen anything yet. Yeah. I, I mean, I, don't I didn't. Know. I don't even think I got a confirmation email. I got a confirmation screen <laughs> yeah i got a confirmation screen that i took a picture of but so did i didn't I. get any email either. so did i i screenshot that because i was like <laughs> mm, i don't trust you um so i definitely i was like i gotta save that so i mean that could be weeks or months at this point i mean i totally. heard from somebody this morning that, we, that i told you before we record there was like a 1.6 million application backlog that they were looking yeah. at. it's probably more than that well, and I can tell you two weeks ago, um, the like director of the World Trade Center in Utah, he reached out to our firm and was like, hey, we're looking for volunteers. Uh, we need people who can volunteer 10 to 25 hours a week to <laughs> a help us. Yep, a half work week. To process SBA applications. And we'll give them, we'll put them through the training so they can know how to answer the questions. But basically, they're they're trying to make everybody an, a loan underwriter. Like, oh gosh, like so goes I, out. I want to help small business owners, but oh, I can't. Yeah. So the so all in all of this, I have to imagine that the silver lining here is because of the sheer quantity of applications. They're like for for lack of better terms, like these are going to get rubber stamped for the most part. I can't imagine they're putting anything more than just like, you are a business, you have applied, you checked the two boxes, you breathe air, here you go. I can't imagine they can do more than that. And I can tell you on the triple P loans, the SBA has said like, there's no personal credit score they're running. There's no personal guarantees you're giving. You don't have to do any collateral. 
assuming there are some banks in the world that get their act together by tomorrow and are willing to do this, those loans should happen. They should be processed pretty quickly. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I've uh, gotten text messages from other people who talk to their bankers that basically said, as soon as this gets approved, like we're going to have money in your hand in days, yeah. not, not weeks. I because think there's we, not a full underwriting process that we're used to with, well, what value are you, what assets are you going to put up for collateral? We have to do evaluation on that. And we need to look at your bank funds and your ability to repay the loan. I mean, if you think about it, two and a half times monthly payroll is actually not going to be that big of a number for businesses. Not really. It doesn't. I mean, even the guy who's hits half a million dollars, he's probably going to get. He does millions and millions of dollars of revenue. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it's just to bridge the gap because we're hoping this whole crap blows over and ends in, you know, four to eight weeks. They told us June. They told us June tenth here in Virginia, which I lost my mind. <laughs> June tenth, like I like. They're not revisiting anything until June. I 10th. have no idea. They better because I about lost my mind. <laughs> <laughs> I, I nobody wanted to be around me for about half a day. I was like, you gotta be kidding me. But uh, and simply because I knew what the ramifications for of that were. Like it just everything becomes like. And my thing has been like, uh, and I think this is most gyms. Most gyms members they're good for like 30 days. They're like, we're going to support you. It's fine. And then after that, the, the ramifications hits everybody. Yeah. And now everybody's like, yeah, I'm not just going to give you money and nor should they. Right. So then this is when people are scrambling. They're like, okay, well 40, you know, 60 to 75 days changes everything. You know, like that is a big problem. Um, so yeah, I hope they revisit it, but who knows? With no idea. So I think the one thing we've been talking about the actual loans, I think it's worth mentioning though, just financial fiscal responsibility. Mm -hmm. I, look, this is, might sound harsh, uh, but I feel like it's a good truth. If you were a gym owner and your gym was failing pre COVID-19, I do not think borrowing money is the solution for you. Unless somehow you magically have found, and I shouldn't say magically because that's, there are, you, there are ways to do this. If you have found a new revenue stream during this whole process and are now able to bring in money better than you were before, go ahead, I think, and borrow money to help tide you over. Mm -hmm. But if you were in trouble before and even potentially already borrowing money, let's be responsible here. While it's a great interest rate, it is, it is a loan that you're probably going to have to pay back. So I just, I mean, if, if you had a thriving gym before COVID-19, yes, bridge the gap, stay in business. Those, of, those that were failing, I just, I don't think it's fiscally a good idea to borrow money to keep covering a model that you clearly weren't being successful at to begin yeah. with. Yeah. So on that note, we'll, let's, let's stick with fiscal responsibility. I know you sent an email, but I haven't had a chance to read it. So people are in no man's land. What's the first thing you recommend they start cutting as far as costs so that we can retain as much money as possible? Everything. Like the first thing to cut is like, look at your finances. I mean, what was productive as of March 1st is not a productive expense anymore. I mean, ultimately, if you, if you think about it, uh, First of all, you at this point, you should have spoken to your landlord already mm -hmm. to some degree. I know here in the state of Utah, the governor signed into law um, a few days ago, like mandatory landlords are not allowed to collect rent or something like that. Like you can't be in trouble for not paying your rent to a landlord uh, until May 15th or something like that. So this was a question. And a lot of this was in some of the legislation that came out. I, I, everything that I read had to do with single family homes, but nothing that I read, unless it came down from the state, at least the federal stuff that I read, had anything to do with small businesses. It was just like, yeah, you're shit out of luck. Yeah, I mean, I read that too, where um, Trump said, if you're a lender, you're not allowed to foreclose on anybody right now, uh, that type of thing. But yeah, this was specifically from the state for us in Utah for commercial people, um, which was, it's nice. And I get like, it kind of sucks for the landlords, but I guess what it kind of sucks for us too, because they forced us to shut down. <laughs> yeah. And that's kind of where I've 
where I've been is just the whole, you made me do this. So I'm going to do what I can to retain everything that I can. And if that is rough for other people, well, welcome to the club. Like it's rough for everybody. So, um, yeah, I talked to my landlord and I basically was like, <laughs> it was funny. He was like, so what are you thinking? I was like, I'm thinking I'm not going to pay you in April. <laughs> like, <laughs> Uh, and he was like, yeah, he's like, well, I think we'll be able to work something out. And I was like, I don't, I think you're misunderstanding this. I like, I'm not paying you in April. Like, it's just not happening, you know? Um, and full disclosure, I probably could. I just don't think it's smart until I figure out like what's going on in the space. Like we'll deal with me being late and here in a couple of weeks, but I'm not just going to give you cash for the sake of giving you cash because you're probably not paying yours. That's, that's my bet, <laughs> you know? So. I don't yeah, know if that's smart, I mean, but like, I feel like, um, what I've been telling people is cause I've heard some people do the wrong approach on this where they went to the landlord and just said, Hey, can you just forgive this month's rent? No, I definitely didn't do that. I asked him. I, I know, said, hey, I know you yeah. didn't, but like some people have thought that. And I, I get the reasoning from our standpoint, like we're kind of picked on, even though fitness is probably the one thing that people shouldn't be giving up right now to whatever. Um, but they forced us to close. I, I think the approach is, and likely what you'll end up working out with your landlord is, yeah, whatever months that I missed, we'll just add that on. Like I'll pay a little bit more every month. And so over the course of 12 months, you're made whole or by the, at least by the end of our lease term, you're, you're made whole. I'm not asking you to walk away from the money. I'm just saying based on what's going around, I'm going to feel more comfortable making sure that I can put food on my table. Yeah. 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 And I think, I think as a, as a business owner, like you do have some leverage, right? I think the old adage is like, Hey, if, if you owe somebody $5, you have a problem. If you owe somebody 5 million, they have a problem. So you have to look at like the terms of your lease. Um, it, it's safe to say that nobody's going to be leasing any space anytime soon. So they want a tenant. It's in their best interest to work with you. So I've seen people go with one of two uh, scenarios, which is, Hey, will amortize the that rent over the year. Yep. I didn't want to add any additional monthly expenses moving forward because I don't know what that's going to look like. So I just said, can you take that month and then just, I think I have 33 months left on the lease. Let's just make it 34 months. I'll pay you on the back end and we'll just move it. Um, and that was my pitch, you know, like he could come back and give me something else. But like, that's what I said, because I don't want any more monthly expenses, because depending on what you pay rent, you know, you could be bumping your monthly rent by five to 700 bucks a month, which is again, yeah. a problem, you know, so um, yeah, so that's what I suggested. And um, because I told him, I was like, listen, I want to pay you, I want to stay here, I want to be a tenant. And I occupy 39% of the building. So he needs he would really like to have me here, you know? Yeah. Because so. if you're out by the time this blows over, he's, I mean, he's, he's going to lose well over a quarter million dollars. If I, like, if I have to pack up and leave. And not just that, it's probably more than that because he's also going to get someone in at a lower rate that you're currently on a lower rate. Board. He's going to have to pay for a broker, like all that stuff. It, it adds up. So I, this is, uh, these are things that I think gym owners need to have in your back pocket. Like you do have a leverage here in this conversation. So, so feel free to use it because it's not your fault. Like you didn't, and most of us, you didn't run a shitty business, run it in the ground and like, just can't pay for some reason. Like right. the government shuts you down. And it's not weird if you're like, I'm not going to pay you this month because nobody's paying any bills this month. So, right. um, but understand like you, you do need to do that from a standpoint of like, I'm not trying to not pay you ever. I'm just trying to navigate the scenario and we'll get whole at a date that's fair for everybody. Um, so I just think everybody should keep that in their back pocket because I think it's reasonable. And I don't, I have not heard of anybody who's I'm maybe one story who's anybody's landlord um, was like, nope, you owe rent. At which point they're just like, I'm not paying you rent. Yeah. And they were probably just too soon because they can just come yeah. back and yeah, be like, uh, well, actually I'm just, I'm not going to pay you. And if you try to like lock me out of my space or take my equipment, you're, I mean, a landlord who does that is going to be in a much more big legal fire than you are for not paying your lease, especially yeah. right now with yeah. the environment. Well, it's also the, you have to understand like, their first answer is going to be no pay me. 
<laughs> of course. So, so just be ready for that and be like, no, we need to pay. Like, eh, I'm not going to pay. And they're like, okay, you don't have to pay this time. Like that's pretty much how it's going to go. Cause they don't really have a choice at this point. Uh, I mean, they do, but no landlord is going to fight that. It's just not going to, it's not going to end up well for them. Like the, the, the math doesn't add up legally. It doesn't add up. Like they kind of have to play ball here. So just do it professionally. Don't try to screw them over. Um, because remember you do have to have a relationship with them post <laughs> post Corona, you know, and you don't want to blow that up. So, um, anything else we need to cover? Uh, no, I don't think so. I mean, probably yes and everything, but no, yeah. I think we covered yeah. the loan stuff. I think, I think we got most of the big ticket items that people have questions about. Um, and, and I would agree with you. Most of the stuff they've simplified, I haven't seen anything that's been sent to me that was more than four pages for it, for it, for any of those loans. So, um, any resources people should be available of either that you guys are putting out or that you've seen that are, that is useful. Yeah, I mean, gosh, things have changed so much. Uh, as of right now, no, I, I think everyone probably would have seen some of the SBA stuff, um, that we've been seeing. But, okay. Yeah. Well, listen, man, I know you're tired. I know you probably haven't slept in a week, so I'm going to let you go. Um, thanks again for your time, man. Um, and then again, if you guys do not uh, have not been in contact with John at Insight Tax, hit them up. Um, Profit First for Micro Gems. Get the book. You're definitely going to need it now. Um, and then just go and, uh, and hit up Insight Tax because they send out a lot of good information just via email, like weekly and, and, and biweekly. So um, thanks, man. I really appreciate this. This has been super uh, educational for me. So I appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. Thanks, Jason. Thanks for listening to Best Hour of Their Day. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. First of all, it's free. How cool is that? There's a creation tool that allows you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer so it becomes super simple. Some of these episodes with Fern or Todd or myself chatting with one another, we've done right within the app itself. Anchor will make it easy to distribute your podcast to all platforms, Spotify, Apple, and many more. And you can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make an awesome podcast in one place. All you have to do is download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started today. Come on, who doesn't have Spotify at this point? And if you were unaware, Spotify now is offering podcasts. That's right. On Spotify, you can listen to all your favorite artists, but also podcasts in one place for free. Spotify has a huge catalog of podcasts on every topic, including the one you're listening to right now, best hour of their day. On Spotify, you can follow your favorite podcasts so you never miss an episode Premium users can even download episodes to listen to offline wherever you are, something I always do before I hop on a plane. And you can even easily share what you're listening to with your friends on Instagram and other social media platforms. Here's the deal. If you haven't done so already, be sure to download the Spotify app, search for best hour of their day on Spotify, or browse some other podcasts if you want. You can find them in your library tab. And also make sure to follow me so you never miss an episode of Best Hour of Their Day. Thanks again for listening to Best Hour of Their Day. And thanks again to our special guest. We appreciate all you guys do for us with Best Hour of Their Day when it comes to sharing our posts on Instagram, when it comes to subscribing to us on YouTube, when it comes to the constant feedback. We are grateful and we appreciate it. We are trying to build a community based on coaching development and becoming the best version of yourself. And it goes without saying that we couldn't do without all of you. So if you haven't already, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Season one of Dropping In is out. We are getting tremendous feedback and we'd love for you to check it out. Leave us a comment on there. Head over to our Instagram. Give us a follow like our pictures, feel free to share anything that resonates with you. And if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or feedback for us, please don't hesitate. Email us, besthouroftheirday at gmail.com.
www.thebestdadcom.com. Thanks again. Until the next episode, we hope you've had the best hour of your day.